as they're going through what they're going through and in regards towards checking out or possibly going to check out they're willing to bring that much more grief and despair to people around them and we're talking about innocent people I have figured out the very harsh hard way here in Northwest Tennessee that you don't have to do something to somebody pertaining to beating them on a car deal trying to get fresh with their wives are, are trying to steal their daughters or their sons away from them you don't have to do nothing to that individual for those individuals to hate you pertaining to hate mongering I have figured this out the hard way here in Northwest Tennessee since I've come back here that you don't have to do nothing, absolutely nothing, to be targeted and to be hunted and to be violated and demonized and dehumanized in such a way, demoralizing way. And that's basically the only reason why that I'm bringing this up is because I have realized the harshness of society. And I've never been to the Middle East. I've never been around a suicide bomber that I know of other than possibly being around some of the Taliban while I was being held in confinement in MCC in downtown Chicago down in the hill while they was getting ready to prep me to go up into open population. That's the only time that I knowingly know of that I was around that type of evil, that type of darkness I've never been to the Middle East and if it means for me to go over there to try to reform people in their way of thinking I'm available at any time to try to see a mighty movement of God conform these type of evil cold hearted dysfunctional people throughout the world regardless whether it be here in America or over in a third world country. People need to pay attention to the facts, especially the scientific facts pertaining to what we're dealing with right now, but people need to pay attention to what the Bible talks about as far as an adversary. You do not have to do nothing as a child of God to have an adversary. A matter of fact, as soon as you make a sworn allegiance to God through the teachings of Christ, you automatically become the dark forces, the dark entities adversary. You automatically become a target for Lucifer, the false prophet, the Antichrist, and the dark entities that basically got booted out of heaven thousands of years ago. You automatically become a target without having to do nothing. Without absolutely having to do one single thing. That is the only reason why that I'm bringing this up that it needs to be addressed if it gets as severe as what it has in other countries. For a person to purposely get out here and deliberately want to contaminate other people, especially innocent people, knowingly, voluntarily doing this, and we can prove that that person knew that they didn't go through proper screening or they didn't self-contain themselves long enough to do that, so that they could get that virus out of their system to the point that they was basically not going to be contaminating other people. That if they was doing it voluntarily or purposely, that there needs to be some sort of litigation towards punishing that person, whoever he or she may be that's doing this. And you hate to think that there's people in society like that, but there really is. And there's more so in other parts of the country than there are right here 
of the people that I've been dealing with for the past few years since I come back here in 2014. But there really are people out there who follow the guidelines of the teachings of Lucifer that are out to kill, steal, and destroy. Simply based around another person's spiritual atmosphere. In other words, if my spiritual atmosphere, if my aurora don't match their aurora, they're after me. I'm a target. I'm going to be hunted. I'm going to be dehumanized. I'm going to be demonized. I'm going to be de, uh, de dissected from society, ostracized. And that's exactly what has happened to me in the past 30 years since I have began this open movement with the Windmill Ministries based around various people that was discriminatory discriminating against the messenger simply because they didn't like the message. Being treated so unfairly. Being untreated so unfairly. But you don't necessarily have to have a mouthpiece like the founder of the Windmill Ministries has had in the past 30 years of the individual that's speaking to you right now towards doing stuff so flamboyantly the way that I have. All you have to do is have the spirit of the real Christ and not the Antichrist, which will automatically make you a target in that 1% or 2% of that 1% that people need to be familiar with of these dark entities that are roaming the earth that I call, I personally call them reptilians. Reptilians that are walking around in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are nothing more than raging, ravening wolves. So please, whoever gets a hold of this message, rather not it be today, tonight, tomorrow, or a week from tomorrow, give this some thought about mandating some sort of a law in regards of people, regardless whether they got AIDS or other types of diseases that are purposely wanting to get out here and contaminate other people so that they can go through the same type of suffering that they're going through to mitigate some sort of a punishment to help to detour people from doing these type of dirty, evil, wicked demonic deeds because you got to face the you got to face the facts that there are people out there that don't give a damn about their own personal life and if they don't give a damn about their own personal life do you really believe that they're going to care about somebody else's life if they walk around with a cigarette in both hands cussing and swearing drinking, carousing around, jumping from one bedroom to another, don't care if they catch a sexual transmitted disease, don't care if they catch cancer, don't care about other health issues that's bothering them. Do If they don't care about their own well-being, do you really think that these same type of people that are treating themselves that way actually are going to care about other people's lives? Use a little common sense whenever it comes to how evil and demonic and dark that people can actually become. Once more, I give the President of the United States two thumbs up in what he's doing today. The stock market had, has made this very clear that began in a fluctuating form somewhere around five or six hundred points to the point now it's it's doubled uh, just during this speech. So I give the president two thumbs up in him utilizing his his uh, his abilities to be able to bring people together 
in the regards towards uh, opening up this this um, Stanford Act, which I thought was forty billion. He said it's up to fifty billion of trying to mandate, mitigate, excuse me, trying to mitigate this disease from it reaching proportions of disaster on levels that is absolutely unfathomable for people to think of. So please, please, this is a time for unification. Not a time to bicker. Not a time for point fanging. Point, point, finger pointing. It's not a time for one party to blame the other party. It's a time to listen, pay close attention, and be vigilant of the people and the things around you towards what most countries haven't experienced for over a hundred years since the Spanish pandemic. It's serious. And I started out with this message pertaining to this coronavirus in that same form. This is serious. You don't want to underestimate it, but at the same time, you don't want to overkill it. At the same time, you don't want to underestimate it. In other words, you want to be cautious, but you don't want to be overcautious to the point that you actually create a panic. So use your own judgment in how you feel, what you've heard on this particular program, and how you are to weigh this out in a practical, logical, meaningful, adult-type way. Uh, it's incredible what's uh, sports, what's happening with the sporting world, where uh, so many of the great sports that we've gotten so used to at this time of the year, they're not going to be meeting, and they've done a, a great service, actually, but that, that would be a, another way that it could be, uh, problems could be caused. But this is why I outlined on Wednesday night my admission, administration's uh, the fact that we've issued a requirement suspending all medically unnecessary visits to various places, but in particular nursing homes. We should all be working off the same playbook when it comes to protecting Americans. We have to. We need to be consistent in adopting measures to limit the spread of the virus. The virus is the same whether it's spreading in cities, towns, or rural communities. The tools and tactics for attacking it are similar no matter where you go. You know, no matter where you go, you have some hot spots throughout the world right now that people would have never thought possible. And they're being very seriously affected. The key among these efforts are breaking chains of transmission between people. These. It looks like it's finally pegged itself at 1,981 points. Largest point gain in history. And I'm pretty sure that's based around the time frame of where it began in the six or seven hundred range compared to where it's bottomed out because I'm pretty sure the time has now exceeded <clears throat> I don't forgot what time zone that they're in but I'm sure they have shut down the Dow Jones for today and that's where the market has landed during the talking of our chief and commander the president of the United States the leader of the free world talking about utilizing and trying to mitigate the severity of these problems to the best of this government's ability. Measures have been adopted by many companies, universities and schools and we want to protect the safety and the health of their employees and their students. I encourage everyone to follow the guidelines we've issued by CDC and these common sense measures. A lot of it's common sense. 
For the areas where the virus is spreading, the CDC is advising communities to postpone large gatherings, postpone assemblies, social functions and sporting events, stagger recess and lunch for schools that aren't canceled, limit in-person meetings, increase scheduled cleanings, then cancel work, sponsor travel, among numerous other steps that can be taken. Americans are the strongest and most resilient people on earth. And in the coming weeks, we will all have to make changes and sacrifices, but these short-term sacrifices will produce long-term gain. And again, I've said we're learning a lot for the future and future problems like this, or worse, or worse, could get worse. The next eight weeks are critical. We can learn and we will turn a corner on this virus. Some of the doctors say it will wash through, it will flow through in interesting terms and very accurate. I think you're going to find in a number of weeks it's going to be a very accurate term. In times of hardship, the true character of America always shines through. We live in the company of the greatest heroes and the most inspiring citizens anywhere in the world. We want to take care of our people. We want to draw on the strength of our history, draw on the strength of our people. Then we will get through this all together. We will just get through it. So much progress has already been made. And frankly, the numbers, because the steps that have been taken, are at a level that a lot of people are surprised. I like to use the terminology of it's going to have to play out its course. That's the terminology that I use. It's going to have to take its own course and play it out pertaining to the coronavirus and how severe it gets and what it does in the time frame that it does it in. My battery is running low right now, so if my phone cuts off, once more we want to wish everybody the best of luck. Good luck to all of us in these last day biblical Bible prophecy times and shalom if my phone automatically cuts off because I can see that it's getting dim pertaining to my battery holding up. To my viewers, good luck to all of us. Especially when you compare them with other places with far smaller populations. The spirit and the will of our nation is unbreakable. We will defeat this threat when America's tested America rises to the occasion. And to those families and citizens who are worried and concerned for themselves and their loved ones, I want you to know that your federal government will unleash every authority, resource, and tool at its disposal to safeguard the lives and health of our people. So we're with you every step of the way. No nation is more prepared or more equipped to face down this crisis. As you know, we are rated number one in the world. We're also helping other nations. Many other nations, we're helping them a lot and they're doing okay in some cases in some cases they're not doing well at all but we're working with a lot of groups of people and a lot of other nations with faith and heart and hope and love and determination we will succeed we will prevail we will be very very successful and we'll learn for the future thank you all very much if you have any questions we can take some go ahead john please uh, and if you'd like to ask some of the folks up here, would be fine, please. Sure. Uh, Mr. President, uh, where are you with the House bill? Uh, yesterday we talked to you in the Oval Office. You were opposed to it. What has happened since then, and, and what's the holdup on that? Well, we just don't think they're giving enough. We don't think the Democrats are giving enough. We're negotiating. We thought we had something, but uh, all of a sudden they didn't agree to certain things that they agreed to. So uh, we could have something, but we don't think they're giving enough. They're not. Uh, they're not uh, doing what's right for the country. And if I could ask Dr. Fauci. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. You just mentioned um, waiving interest for student loans. Yeah. You talked about buying oil from the, uh, from the SPR or adding to the SPR. What other specific targeted measures is your administration thinking about taking? The Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said today that you're just in the second inning of yeah, things that you well, might be undergoing. That's true, and we are looking at many different things, as you know. You know, some of them have been written about very widely, but we're going to be releasing a paper in about two hours uh, stating quite a few other steps, very important ones. Please, go ahead. What's there, if you wouldn't mind? 
Please, go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I want to I wanna know if you are in contact with the Brazilian President Bolsonaro after a member of his delegation uh, who was with you Saturday was tested positive. And also, Senator, I, I want to ask another question, if you let me. Senators Lindsey Graham and also Senator Scott, uh, Rick Scott are self-isolating. Are you planning to take any uh, kind of precautionary, uh, precautionary measure to protect you and also your staff who was there? No, we have uh, no symptoms whatsoever, and uh, we have we had a great meeting with the president of Brazil, Bolsonaro, great guy, very uh, very tremendous. He's done he's doing a fantastic job for Brazil, and as you know, he tested negative, meaning nothing wrong this morning, and we got that word too because we did have dinner with him. Uh, we were sitting next to each other for a long period of time. But are you in contact with him over uh, the coronavirus uh, no, we have, crisis? No, we have. We're talking about it country to country. But uh, we did discuss uh, if he had a problem. It was reported that he may have it, and he doesn't, fortunately. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Uh, Dr. Fauci said earlier this week that the lag in testing was, in fact, a failing. Do you take responsibility for that? And when can you guarantee that every single American who needs a test will be able to have a test? What's the date of that? Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all because we were given a, uh, a set of circumstances and we were given rules, regulations, and specifications from a different time. Uh, wasn't meant for this kind of uh, an event uh, with the kind of numbers that we're talking about. And what we've done is redesigned it very quickly with the help of the people behind me. And we're now in very, very strong shape. I think we'll be announcing, as I said, Sunday night. And uh, this will start very quickly. And we will have, we'll have the ability to do uh, in the millions uh, over a very, very quick period of time. So no, and what we have done, and we are going to be leaving a very indelible print for the future in case something like this happens again. But it was a, and that's not the fault of anybody, and frankly, the old system worked very well for smaller numbers, much smaller numbers, but not for these kind of numbers. Uh, Tony, maybe by you'd Sunday like to say night, something. Will you have, Tony, yes, first. please, by Sunday night, will every American be yeah. able to get a test? So, just to reiterate what I said to many of you multiple times, it's a distance of a system. The system was not designed for what it was designed for, it worked very well. The CDC designed a good system. If you want to get the kind of blanket uh, testing and availability that anybody can get it, or you could even do surveillance to find out what the penetrance is, you have to embrace the private sector. And this is exactly what you're seeing, because you can't do it without it. So when I said that, I meant the system was not designed for what we need. Now, looking forward, the system will take care of it. And Mr. President, and with interestingly, respect, if you go back, please, if you go back to the swine flu, uh, it was uh, nothing like this. They didn't do testing like this, and actually, they lost approximately 14,000 people, and they didn't do the testing. They started thinking about testing when it was far too late. What we've done, and one of the reasons I think people are respecting what we've done, we've done it very early. We've gotten it very early, and we've also kept a lot of people out. Mr. President, uh, Mr. President yes, the please, last administration please. said that they had tested a million people at this point. You've been well, ask them how they did with the years. swine flu. It was a disaster. With respect, you've been Next, please. Next, please. They had a very big failure with swine flu. A very big failure. President, I want to ask you about the uh, European travel ban that goes into effect at midnight yeah. tonight and the exemption that you've offered to the UK. There are 17 countries that are in the so-called Schengen zone that have fewer coronavirus cases than the UK. And just in the past 24 hours, the UK has added 208 coronavirus cases to their total. Why do they, Mr. President, deserve an exemption? And would you consider adding them to this travel ban list? Well, that was recommended to me by a group of professionals, and uh, we are looking at it based on the new numbers that are coming out, and we may have to include them in the list of countries that we will uh, you could say ban or whatever it is during this period of time. But yeah, the numbers have gone up fairly precipitously over the last 24 hours. So we may be adding that and we may be adding a couple of others and we may frankly start thinking about taking some off. 